What's up, Zombie Talk? One, two, three here. Um, I definitely do not have time. Um, okay, I have time, but <laughs> no, no. I mean, there's a lot of deals that happened in the winter meetings so far, and it's far from over. It's just getting started, actually. Um, I think the first day, it takes a while for things to circulate and warm up. You can't expect teams to go there with plans, yes, but uh, a day might not be enough to get a deal done at, at some time. So, uh, Today, there's a lot more deals, and tomorrow, expect the same thing. Tomorrow's the last day of the winter meetings. I know it's a sad thing. I wish it could go on for, like, another week or something. Um, but I think we had enough Albert Pujols rumors for one winter meetings, and it looks as though he will appear uh, to re-sign with the Cardinals. Now, I'm sorry for you seeing me looking down at my iPod. I don't like to look at computers when I'm talking. I just kind of go off the top of my head, you know, know what's going on and then just kind of report on it and talk about what I think. Um, but I have to see, I'm just looking at headlines of who has been signed the recent day at the winter meetings. And really what they're mostly talking about, okay, there's your fools. The Marlins signed Mark Burley. I made a video on that. You can go check it out. I don't really talk, I don't want to talk 10 minutes on Mark Burley. So um, a good deal for the Marlins though. Um, and I think it was smart for them to go from pools to pitching because uh, I think he will have a bigger impact than Pujols will in the Marlins. The fact that Gabby Sanchez is young, put up great numbers. Yes, Pujols would have made a big impact on the franchise and uh, the fans. I think uh, team-wise, I think they are fine without Pujols. Um, and really, you know, offering him a 10-year deal is very risky. Um, so then you look at the Pirates sign Eric Bedard. Very good deal for the Pirates. As, as uh, you see last year, they improved their rotation a lot, getting uh, Kevin Correa. Um, and some other guys, and, and the rotation looks a lot better, you know, with Jeff Carson's and other guys developing. They're trying to get over 500 for the first time in, like, 20 years. So, for them, get Eric Bedard, a very solid uh, starting uh, pitcher, very solid move for the Pirates, very good move, and look for him to, I think he'll probably go get 12 wins next year as a Pirate, my prediction, 11 or 12, maybe 9. <laughs> I think that's the lowest, though, 9. Win, uh, Yankees win rights to Heroicui. Uh, Nakajima, sorry, I'm really bad with names sometimes, um, Hiroki Nakajima, I'm guessing that's how you say his name, um, so it was like $2 million, wasn't as big as I expected, um, some people were making a really big deal about this shortstop, um, but I'm not sure if the Yankees are going to reach an agreement with him, I don't know if they really want to pay him that much money, uh, he could end up just playing with Japan, I, I don't know yet, I have no idea, honestly, um, I'm not sure why the Yankees need him. I mean, they do have Jeter. They could develop him or try to develop him, even though he's played, you know, in Japan a lot. Uh, you know, who knows, honestly. Uh, the Padres, so I remember when this deal happened. It was pretty big. I actually might make a video on it. It's almost that big of a deal. Uh, no, I'm joking. I, I make a videos on a lot of small deals, but every deal is, is big in my eyes because it can affect a team so much. You know, you look at a, a deal, a small deal, Ryan uh, Vogelson, um, you know, a minor league deal, and he affected the team so much. I mean, a little deal can affect your team. So don't ever think a little deal is a bad deal. It's It could definitely improve, and your management is definitely making a deal um, for a reason. You know what I mean? So the Padres acquired Houston Street. Uh, very good deal. The Padres, they had all these relief arms lined up to be closer if Heath Bell is gone. Well, within a year, their two best relievers are gone. Heath Bell and Mike Adams, do you think they want to use Luke Gregerson, guys like that, um... For the closer role, no, I think they wanted to find closer. They need someone who's experienced. Bring in Houston Street, paying in pretty much all the salary. That's great. You get him in that closer. And really, market price, there's no one that much cheaper than him. Unless they would have went for like a guy like Sergio Sanchez. I like what they did, though. Houston Street, all they had to do, give up a uh, player to be named later and, so, and, and pay for his salary. So, I mean, it's not a bad deal. You get Houston Street uh, for under market value. Um, you have, you know, Gregerson and Qualls and all those, Quails and all those guys or whatever, uh, however you say his name. Um, I'm going off the top of my head, sorry. Uh, in the eighth inning. So you have more defined roles. You know, you got those guys in the eighth inning, and then you have um, Houston Street in the ninth. So it's very important for that to happen. Otherwise, you'd have to split some of your relievers and try to make a closer and define his role. You know what I mean? I think going into spring training is very important for a team to have a defined closer. I mean, unlike the Cardinals last year, they are mishmash all year, and it worked out fine. But I think for this team especially, I think they needed some depth in the relief, and uh, they used to have it. Well, Mike Adams and Heath Bell gone, they definitely 
desperately need a closer like uh, Houston Street. Great deal for the Padres. A Pirates signed Nate McLeod. Now, I remember uh, I was a Cardinal fan watching Nate McLeod just bomb away on the Cardinals a few games. You know, he hit 30 home runs, uh, plus with the Pirates a few years ago, was dealt to the Braves um, at full value. I mean, this is when he was full value, and, uh, and he just did not do well at all. Um, I mean, he did really bad. He was injured a lot. just couldn't find it. He's going back to the city where he flourished, a comfortable city for him, Pittsburgh. Um, knows a lot of guys there, obviously. And it was a very cheap contract, so this could definitely be a high reward for the Pirates. Look for him to bounce back, maybe hit um, – if he can hit 15 home runs, I think that would be really big considering the amount that he's getting paid in his last few years. But right now, I think that he is he's obviously going to be used as depth in the outfield, maybe move to a corner outfield spot. But if he earns a spot back in, he could be a very powerful bat in this Pirates lineup. Uh, Mets signed Frank Francisco. Mets also signed uh, John uh, Rauch. I'm not sure if that's how you say his name. And then they traded and got Ramon Ramirez in a deal. I love all three of the moves that the Mets made, especially the Ramon Ramirez move. I absolutely love it. You know, you get Ramon Ramirez, you got your eighth inning guy, all right? Um, you get uh, John Rauch, I'm sorry if I pronounce his name, another eighth inning guy who could compete for the closer role. From, uh was Toronto, a free agent. They signed him, pretty good deal there. Then you get Frank Francisco. Uh, an experienced closer who, you know, all three of those guys could potentially be a closer, mainly the two guys who used to be on Toronto, Francisco and John uh, Roach. Um, but so Ramirez, obviously, is the eighth inning guy at this point. And you have those two guys uh, competing for the closer role. I'm guessing it will be uh, Francisco, um, but it really could go either way, honestly. I mean, they both have some experience or, or some, yeah, some experience trying to close, but I think Francisco is the definite closer out of that group. Um, so two or three really good deals, and they pretty much fill their bullpen. I mean, the Mets have had a really good winter meeting, actually, uh, winter meetings, except for the fact that Jose Reyes was lost. But really, I mean, the Mets, they can move on now. They lost, they saved a lot of money. And if, you know, he if he keeps getting injured like that, I don't know, the Mets didn't want to, you know, give up more than $100 million in six years for him. Marlins can go ahead and offer that. Um, so I don't think the Mets were too upset because of the deal that he signed was way out of the price range. Um, the Giants acquired Pagan from the Mets for Torres and Ramirez as part of the deal I was talking about. Andres Torres, probably a non-tender candidate, um, and then Angel Pagan was going to have a contract tendered to him. Um, and then you look at Ramon Ramirez, who was going to have a contract tendered to him. So it's kind of like a more of a Ramon Ramirez for Angel Pagan, but you're getting um, Andres Torres um, just you know basically for free right now. Um, but you're going to have to pay salary, of course. <laughs> um, so I like the deal on both sides. You know, for the Mets, you lose uh, Angel Pagan, you get Andre Soros. I think he's going to – actually, I really do think he's going to do well in the Mets stadium. Why? Because it's such an open stadium, uh, and it's, it's really hard to hit home runs. Andre Soros isn't really a home run hitter. I think he's he can find the gaps there and, and um, could obviously be a really solid pickup for the Mets. We'll see what happens. Um, and then you look at getting uh, Ramon Ramirez, which is the most important part, obviously. He's a really solid reliever for the Giants, uh, eighth-inning guy for the Mets, and it's going to be really important in solidifying that Mets bullpen to help. As long as they have decent starting pitching, um, I think their their relievers are going to pick up the slack there. And then offense-wise, they're not looking terrible. I mean, they definitely can improve, but you know, they, they definitely put themselves in some bad situations. But they're, they're starting to go in the right direction, new GM going in the right direction. I like it. All right. Uh, again, Blue Jays acquired Sergio Santos. I make a, I made a video on that. Rockies acquired Kevin Slowey, the starter from the Twins, probably a non-tender candidate, um, but definitely pick a good pickup for the Rockies. So the Rockies, they have all these guys um, that they got in their Baldo Jimenez trade. Two of them, Alex White and Pomeranz, are probably going to be ready to start uh, the major leagues as, as early as spring training, maybe even, you know, maybe wait a little bit on them. So I think them getting um, – Kevin Slowey, and then I believe they, they were close on another, another starter. I think it's really good to add veteran depth into that uh, starting rotation to, um, you know, really help out just overall strengthen the rotation and especially strengthen it until you get those big prospects good and going uh, well. And then the Twins, or the Dodgers signed Aaron Harang, two-year deal there. I think it's worth $12 million. Dodgers keep, you know, recycling out these two-year deals. I think after the two years is up, I think that's the window to win. Um, but I do think they're going to have two decent years with the, the um, free agents they got. They're going to have pretty good years. I mean, they'll be fine. The Twins signed Matt Capps. Um, solid move here. And by the way, Dodgers rotation is pretty much filled up now. Filled up. <clears throat> it is filled up. 
Uh, the Twins signed Matt Caps. Uh, you know, the Twins had to give up a lot for Matt Caps. They had to give up. Um, oh, I can't believe I just forgot his name. Wilson Ramos, excuse me. Um, and then um, he didn't. He had one, you know, pretty good year. Didn't have a great year last year at all. They signed him though, pretty expensive deal actually. I think he's making like four or five million dollars per year. And then the Marlins signed Jose Reyes, of course. Uh, so some big deals happening in the winter meeting so far. Expect maybe more tomorrow. Maybe a Pujols resolution soon, and we'll see how that all goes. All right. Again, thanks for watching, guys. It's Zombie Talk One Two Three, wrapping up the first few days. Or not the first few days. Yeah, yeah, first few days. The first few days are the last day of the winter meetings. All right, thanks for watching, and please continue to watch. Again, uh, I don't like to mention this stuff, but I'm one subscriber short of 100, or at least the last time I checked. So I was thinking, I kept looking at these numbers, and I was like, wow, I could get to 20,000 uploaded views and 100 subscribers, like, at the same day. That's amazing. It could be tonight. So if you're just randomly watching this, at like, you know, 9 o'clock or whatever, then just subscribe and you'll be the 100th subscriber. I don't have like any prize yet, yet, but uh, there might be something there. All right, thanks for watching again. Zombie Talk 1, 2, 3.